Hey everyone, welcome to Area 616. Last week we got a series of announcements regarding Sony's Spider-Man list Spider-Verse. One of the announcements actually was that it now has an official name, which is, get ready for this, Sony's Universe of Marvel Characters, or SUMC. It really rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? I don't know about you guys, but I personally prefer Spider-Man list Spider-Verse, or SMLSV for short. But in any event, they went ahead and cancelled some previous plans, began moving forward on other ones, and it's all just really strange. So yeah, today I figured I'd go over all of the latest news on Sony's universe of Marvel characters, starting with Venom, which is now only about 8 weeks away. So before I start talking about Venom, I should mention that movie's projected opening weekend earnings because they're not good at all. The projection, according to some early releases, is under 50 million, which is just terrible, especially compared to the current comic book movie landscape. I mean, take Ant-Man and the Wasp, easily Marvel's least anticipated movie this year, and even that surpassed 80 million on its opening weekend. So yeah, that's really bad news for Sony. Now the reason I mention this is that it reportedly ties into a piece of news about the Venom movie that was released. Fans have been wondering since this movie's announcement whether or not it would be R-rated, but until now, we'd never really gotten an answer on that. But Sony has revealed that Venom will likely be rated PG-13, and there's a very specific reason for that. According to the report, Sony wants to keep Venom open for future appearances with Spider-Man and other MCU characters, though I would suspect that this has to do with the box office projections as well. More people might go see a PG-13 movie than an R-rated one. Or at least, usually. Honestly, I don't feel like this is the right move. I absolutely want Venom to be part of the MCU, but I really think it should be R-rated. I mean, it just wouldn't feel right if it wasn't. But beyond that, Sony also took this opportunity to further confirm that their movie Morbius is happening. It's set to start filming early next year, so it'll probably hit in the winter or spring of 2020. It's set to star Jared Leto as Morbius himself, with Daniel Espinosa, director of the recent movie Life, set to direct the film. For those who aren't familiar with the character, this is the story of a biochemist named Michael Morbius. Morbius has a rare blood disease that he eventually develops a cure for, but it ends up inadvertently turning him into a living vampire. So, he has all of the characteristics of a vampire, but he's not technically one, as he didn't become one by the traditional means. I'm not completely opposed to a Morbius movie. I guess it could be interesting if done right, but I prefer to see him walk the same universe as Blade and Spider-Man, but I guess that probably won't happen now. Sony has also hired the Equalizer 2 screenwriter Richard Wink to write a script for a Craven the Hunter movie which is just a terrible idea. I mean, the whole point of Craven is that he wants to hunt superhumans like Spider-Man, but if he lives in a world that's mostly devoid of superhumans, then what is he hunting? Venom? I'm willing to bet all of my money that they're just going to make him into some generic assassin or something and just completely misunderstand his character. Oh, and this also means that Craven will not be coming to the MCU anytime unless this is set in the MCU, like Venom may or may not be. I honestly have no clue what's happening anymore. It seems like they're just kind of making it up as they go along. They also announced that while Silver and Black isn't happening anymore, they are developing separate Black Cat and Silver Sable movies, which is a slightly better idea. I like the sound of a Black Cat movie, I think it could be fun. And Silver Sable could be fine too, but she just feels kind of pointless. I mean, even in Spider-Man's comics, she's a really minor character. I just don't get making an entire movie about just her. But Sony has also announced plans for three additional solo films. Silk, Nightwatch, and, get this, Jackpot. Now, Silk, or Cindy Moon, got her powers from the exact same spider that bit Peter Parker. I mean, it literally bit him, crawled away, bit her, and then died. So this presents a problem facing a Silk solo movie. If she can't be in the same world as Peter Parker, will it be just her that gets bitten by the spider? And if so, how in the world could they possibly portray that in a way that doesn't make her seem like a cheap Spider-Man ripoff? 
I mean, people are sick of seeing Spidey's origins. I don't think that would change if it's not Peter Parker being bitten. And also, Cindy Moon already exists in the MCU. She's played by Tiffany Espenson. So, I mean, why not set it in the MCU? Anyway, Nightwatch. He sucks. He's literally just Spawn. There's barely anything that makes him any different. The only notable thing about this movie is that apparently Spike Lee is in negotiations to direct it which is a surprisingly notable director for such a, frankly, lame character. But I don't know, maybe he could make Nightwatch interesting. He's known for having a distinct style, so who knows, maybe it could be good. I still think it's a terrible idea, I'm just trying to find some light in the darkness here. And the last one, Jackpot. Now, Jackpot's the kind of character that makes you think, well, why hasn't she gotten a movie yet, am I right? I mean, with a grand total of, get this, 12 total appearances. 12 appearances. I mean, logically, she's the next option. Forget interesting, popular characters like Spider-Woman, Spider-Man 2099, Spider-Woman, Spider-Gwen, and Spider-Woman. No, Jackpot is who we're going with. Now, Jackpot's whole stick is that Spider-Man thought she was Mary Jane Watson, but she's not. There are two jackpots, Sarah Errett and then Elena Jobson. Sarah was the original but didn't want to be jackpot, so Elena offered to pay her for the title, and she accepted. So Elena took MGH, Mutant Growth Hormone, and got some basic powers and started her brief vigilante career. Getting killed off after 12 total appearances, Literally in the same year she was introduced in. There are plenty of people who would point to the Guardians of the Galaxy and Ant-Man and say, well, they were really minor characters, but they both were successes, so how is this any different? It's very different. The Guardians are small characters, sure, but they have at least had their own book in the past. They've appeared in more than 12 issues, and they have something genuinely interesting to offer to the wider MCU. Minus Venom, Silk, and Morbius, every character I've listed here is primarily known as either a supporting character for Spider-Man, or someone for him to punch in the face. Only Black Cat has really grown beyond Spidey, recently growing her own criminal empire that put her against the likes of Daredevil and the Defenders. So yeah, I would normally say there's no problem with giving small characters a try, but those characters have to have something worth telling, something to put into their movies. Here's a test. Without Spider-Man and no other notable superheroes, what would a Kraven the Hunter movie be about? I'm genuinely curious. I don't hate the idea of Sony making their own Marvel films. I think there's a lot of potential with Venom, and there are plenty of Spider-Man characters that are worthy of their own stories. The problem is, Sony is literally the worst company to try this, because the simple, clear-as-day fact is, they don't know Spider-Man. They think they do, but they don't. They know that he swings around on a web, punches supervillains, and that, as Uncle Ben said, with great power comes great responsibility, but that's it. And if they don't know Spidey, they definitely don't know Venom, or any of these characters. And you might say, how could you expect them to? They're a movie studio. I mean, do you really think the people at Marvel Studios are actually comic book nerds? This is a picture of Kevin Feige's office. This is a person who knows who Spider-Man is. And that's what bothers me here. Obviously, Marvel Studios' goal is to make money. That's just how it is. But it's also so clear that they have so much passion about these characters. They genuinely love all of them, and it shows. It's why their movies work almost every time, because we can see that they love making them. Sony, on the other hand, doesn't care about these characters. There's only one thing they care about with these movies money. It's so obvious that it was just like some intern who gave them a list of Spider-Man characters and Sony was just like, make a movie about all of them and they didn't actually know who any of them were, besides maybe Venom and the popular ones. So what I'm ultimately trying to say here is, Sony, just let Kevin Feige do it. But with all that said, what do you guys think? Do you like the sound of any of these movies, or are there any that you'd like to see Sony make? If you think that a Craven or Jackpot movie might work, let me know why you do. I'm genuinely interested, and I, I don't want these movies to be bad. I just, it's difficult to see them being good.
So yeah, just leave all your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.